Kendrick Lamar is arguably the best rapper of all time. Along with this also comes one of the greatest discographies of any artist on the planet. However, while Kendrick's projects have all been streamed millions of times and won countless awards, what about the music that he's recorded but never released? How many unreleased songs do you have in your head or that we haven't heard yet? Thousands. I done lost hard drives. According to his engineer, that at least six albums worth of completed material just sitting on hard drives. Or, I guess, maybe they've been burned. From his original version of To Pimp a Butterfly, actually titled To Pimp a Caterpillar, prior to taking a trip to South Africa, his quote three to four drafts of Good Kid Mad City that are now totally forgotten, his long rumored and teased collab project with J. Cole, his apparent 2020 rock album that was scrapped, as well as a few others locked away in the vault forever, these are the lost albums of Kendrick Lamar. He is simply a perfectionist when it comes to his albums. While on one hand this results in some of the most critically acclaimed projects ever released, it also means we have to wait years to hear new music from him. 1,855 days to be exact. The five year span before Mr. Morale, which for comparison saw NBA Youngboy drop legit 21 projects. Kendrick Lamar holds himself to such a high standard of quality. He will record a whole song then redo one ad lib a month later because he didn't like how he breathed on the ad Lib. His engineer says, Kendrick will also hold his label mates to that same standard as well, such as Schoolboy Q who apparently scrapped three completed albums prior to Crash Talk because Kendrick convinced him they were trash. Being the perfectionist he is, Kendrick's songs all go through various changes during his creative process. I, I kind of picked this up from him a little bit where we just change all the time. Mm. So, so he'll be on one record and, and, then, and then next day he'll be on the ne next record. You'll often hear verses or hooks from Kendrick Leaks that later reappear on different songs. So as we discuss his unreleased discography, it's likely that many of these tracks were reworked and altered into the released versions we hear today, such as N95 for example, as his verse was originally heard on the leaked demo of Baby Keem's track Vent. Venting in the sand. Can I vent out my truth? I got nothing to lose. I got problems in pools. I can swim with my fate. Cameras moving whenever I'm moving. The family suing whenever I make. However, there are definitely still songs and even albums that Kendrick has totally scrapped in his career. One of the most notable being the original version of To Pimp a Butterfly. Today, To Pimp a Butterfly is claimed as the best rap album ever by many people, regarded as a classic immediately after it dropped. But the truth is, it almost never happened. Back in 2012, Kendrick Lamar began conceptualizing his third album while on the Good Kid Mad City World Tour. While it's unclear what the themes and content of this original project actually were, it was definitely not the direction we eventually heard, nor was it the original title either. To Pimp a Caterpillar? That was, that was an original name and they caught it because it, it, the abbreviation was Tupac, 2PAC. However, the idea and themes for what would later become To Pimp a Butterfly were all sparked following a trip to South Africa in 2014. On this trip, Kendrick would visit many historical sites such as Nelson Mandela's jail cell, a legendary civil rights activist whose name dropped multiple times on the album, helping inspire the many allegorical comparisons we hear between Compton and Africa. It was vital, recalled Kendrick's manager Dave Free about the trip. He called me one night and was like, bro, I just went through a village. He's like, dog, I took my shirt off and I was just with the people. I never felt that much love in one place. When Kendrick returned back to the studio, he was more inspired than ever, inspired to share the experience and emotions that he felt. I took that experience and looked within myself. I come from a background of a neighborhood that wasn't perceived to be great, but I can't let these four corners define who I am. It's bigger than Compton. Then, along with scrapping the previous two to three albums worth of material he had recorded and finished, Kendrick would also change the name of his third album to what it is today. Me changing it to Butterfly, I just really wanted to show the, the the brightness of life and, and the word pimp, it has so much aggression. Right. And that represents several things. For mm -hmm. me, it, it represents um, using my celebrity for good. Right. You know what I mean? It was also a similar story with his second studio album, Good Kid Mad City, in 2012. While there were no life-changing trips to Africa involved, Kendrick has stated that there are about three to four different versions out there, fully mixed and ready to go, but unfortunately the only person who will ever hear them is his engineer. A There's a whole time. Good Kid Mad City album that we finished mixing everything that just is never going to see the day. Really? Which I have on my drive and I, you know, from time to time I might listen to them records because it was just that great. You know, even hearing that first project, it was like, yo, like, it's fucking over. 
Another album locked away on a hard drive likely forever is the Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole collab album, possibly the biggest bucket list album we've never heard. They've teased it for literally the last decade. We know that it actually exists, but unfortunately I don't see it ever dropping. Back in 2010, Kendrick and Cole sparked the first rumors about what they were calling, quote, top secret sh it's a lot of music, I'ma put it to you that way, said Kendrick when initially asked about it. It might not be just one song. Naturally, this sent the internet into a frenzy. Then a year later, Kendrick would give fans the first sneak peek at a listening party for his debut album, Section 80. This still unreleased track titled Temptation was not only featuring J. Cole, but also produced by him as well. At the time, Cole was really trying to build a name for himself with his production, even landing a big placement on the Section 80 single High Power. Kendrick and Cole continued teasing fans for the already super hyped album. We don't have a title or release date yet, but J. Cole got like 90% of the production so far. There's some shit me and J. Cole working on right here. A year later, Cole would confirm that the project was actually an album instead of the originally intended mixtape. Fans kept waiting in anticipation. That mixtape that y'all... Oh, man. It's like folklore. It's hip-hop folklore. Man. Album, man. The Kendrick J. Cole mixtape album. 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 And do you still have some stuff with J. Cole coming? Yeah. We're gonna drop that out the sky, though. I ain't gonna give no dates, no nothing. Another year passed and still no collab album. Kendrick and Cole were now massive artists leading the charge of the hip-hop scene, both writing the huge success of their second albums, with Born Sinner also including their first official release together. However, now is where the problems really began in terms of this collab album. Now I see why these joints don't happen, but it's a different thing when you got Will and both your minds are set on it. It should happen. Cole was referring to the difficulties now dealing with all of the record labels and management involved. To make matters worse, at the time Kendrick was signed to TDE, Aftermath Entertainment, and also Interscope Records, along with publishing handled through Universal. Meanwhile, Cole was signed to Rock Nation, with his distribution via Columbia and his Dreamville label. That's a lot of people to have to go through and make happy, but the two remained positive they could get it done. Even if you just get an EP, you're gonna get something, but we got that shit that we holding in this stash is there gonna be a kendrick lamar j cole album man definitely definitely i, I, I still would love to do it for sure i, I talked to the bro um i don't know probably a little bit over a month and um he's on a tour rocking so we're gonna try to make something happen Fast forward now to 2015 and Kendrick and Cole are proven stars at the top of their game, once again each having dropped another masterpiece. However, it was November 27th, 2015 when something happened which sent fans hype to an all-time high. The day was Black Friday. Out of the blue, Kendrick and J. Cole would release remixes of each other's hit songs exclusively on SoundCloud. Cole would spit bars over Kendrick's All Right instrumental and Kendrick over the Tale of Two Cities beat. But it was these lyrics in the outro of Cole's track which definitely reignited ignited the rumors and speculation. Fans took this as February 2016 being the month we would finally see their album release. To add to it, these assumptions were also fueled by this Facebook post by Kendrick's sister Kayla Duckworth, telling her followers to go check out her brother's new song as well as adding what fans thought was the leaked release date. Collab drop February 16th so be on the lookout as well. A few moments later. Despite anticipation through the roof, February would come and go with not even a mention of the album. In fact, months would pass with still no new news. The most info we got was this tweet by Top Dog President Punch, who even he didn't seem like he knew what was going on. As the years go by and the two reach even higher heights in their careers, I don't see this Kendrick and J. Cole collab album ever releasing. The latest we've heard about it was in 2018 where Cole told fans not to get their hopes up. They shouldn't get their hopes up? Nah. I, not that, not because it's never gonna happen, just because it's like it's not right now. It's not right now, and yeah. I, I don't like teasing or playing the game because this this has been going on for a minute. You know what I mean? It's like it's not like it came from nowhere. So it's like it's you yeah. know I, I gotta take blame in that.
Another album fans shouldn't get their hopes up for is the alleged Kendrick Lamar 2020 rock album. Back in January of 2020, former Billboard editorial director Bill Word would take to Twitter and hint at Kendrick's next album. Are you interested to know that I hear from several friends that recording on the new Kendrick Lamar album may finally be done, and that he's pulling in more rock sounds this time? But who even is this guy though? Does he even know Kendrick? Uh, good question, but again he used to work for Billboard and his tweet blew up. Prior to the COVID pandemic, it looked like Kendrick really did have a big year planned ahead for 2020. He was back headlining multiple festivals for the first time in years, including this British festival in July alongside James Blake and Brittany Howard, the lead singer and songwriter of a blues rock band. However, like almost everything, COVID would put an abrupt stop to Kendrick's plans. It's likely that if this project does actually exist, then it's also locked away and will never release. Maybe the pandemic inspired Kendrick to go in another new direction, seeing as many of the lyrics on Mr. Morale are centered around what was happening in the world at the time. Or maybe he just decided it wasn't good enough and trashed it, since he did say he suffered with writer's block for two years. Writer's block for two years, nothing moved me, ask God to speak through me. Another fan-speculated album that gained hella attention was Kendrick's alleged follow-up project to Damn, named by fans as a nation. This theory got so popular that even Kendrick had to shut it down on Twitter. It's a lot of things in that same, uh, theory that I don't know how these fans get, but they're on point in some Damn. of them. Yeah, they know about certain songs that may or may not be released, okay. and they put things together crazy. This viral theory all began thanks to this one Reddit user. Supported by the fact that Damn was released on Good Friday and symbolized Kendrick's death, the theory proposed that a sequel album was going to drop two days later on Easter Sunday, serving as his resurrection. When the album first went up for pre-order on iTunes, it had a scheduled release date of April 16th, which was Easter but was later changed. Kendrick coincidentally updated his artist picture to one of him in front of a blue background rather than red, and blue was rumored to be the color of this follow-up album. Fans were definitely reaching hard on some of it though, such as all of the supposedly deeper lyrics explained in this genius video that's now aged very poorly. Humble also has a mention of two strokes, as in two albums. My left stroke just went viral. But to add fuel to the already hot fire, the idea that a second Kendrick album exists was seemingly confirmed by Soundwave. But what if I told you that's not the official version? followed by another cryptic tweet of this picture of Morpheus, who as we know in the Matrix offers Neo both a red and blue pill once again hinting at the rumors. But what really set the internet on fire was shortly after when Kendrick was signing autographs for his fans, and happened to mention on IG Live that he did indeed have more music coming. However, all of this would again result in nothing. And as fans continue to flood Kendrick's social media pages, this would lead to him having to tweet regarding the speculation. Thank you for the desire of always anticipating new music of my own. None is coming. Ah, uh, rappers and lying. But today, people fiend so hard for new music from their favorite artists that we even see entire fan-made projects being released, such as this 2018 fake album, Bad Kid Chill City. This unofficial project consisted of eight unreleased Kendrick tracks that had been recorded throughout his career, and came right before a second leak of tons of TDE songs. Like all artists, Kendrick Lamar is faced with the everlasting issue of leaked songs. If you want to hear more about exactly how these unreleased tracks get out, then make sure to also watch my other video too. Kendrick's leaks could still honestly clear a lot of artists' best songs. As the first rapper to ever win a Pulitzer Prize, he is again arguably the greatest to ever do it. But it's just a shame we'll never get to hear any of these scrapped albums. For Kendrick alone, let me say, I think we could put together like six albums. Kendrick Lamar's lost discography is one of the biggest what-ifs in hip-hop history. What if Kendrick had released that collab album with J. Cole? What if he hadn't gone to South Africa and completely changed to Pimp a Butterfly? Could Kendrick have successfully transitioned into rock? Well, the truth is we'll never know.